Um, thank you everybody for coming. Um, when we originally got this project, uh, I personally wanted to model the fate of the human race in a zombie apocalypse, but since both McAllen and Trent work in the BYU Catalysis Lab, we decided to do something we have a little more experience with, which is Fischer Tropes synthesis. <laughs> so if you could go to a gas station right now and fill up your car with Fischer Tropes products, it would cost about $10 a gallon, which is not a great idea, which shows why it needs to be optimized. So we wanted to reduce the cost or increase the profit from a Fischer Tropes synth synthesis process. So a little background about the Fischer Tropes synthesis. It, it's the process of taking gas, particularly carbon monoxide and hydrogen, and turning it into long chain hydrocarbons. And it really gained steam in World War II in Germany because they didn't have a lot of oil sources, but they had a lot of coal. So they would gasify the coal and turn it into liquid fuels for transportation. And it's done over a catalyst, either cobalt or iron, and it's done in a packed bed reactor. Right, and so before we could uh, jump into doing the optimization, we need to come up with a model that would predict what a reactor would do. And so we needed these three equations. So here we've got a rate equation for the rate of fissure trope synthesis. Here we've got the deactivation model, and we've got a selectivity model as well. And so those were developed within the past year for cobalt chaos here at the BYU Catalysis Lab. Um, and so we built a model, and the parameters that we could put into that were temperature, partial pressure, flow rates, and reactor size, and then we had to make a few assumptions. So first what we did is we just had one node, and we were able to use this model to really uh, replicate and match up with data from the fixed bed, from a fixed bed reactor, actual data, and so we knew that it was good. And then we scaled up the model to have lots of nodes and be the same size as a uh, industrial reactor. And when we did that, we actually got some, some rather interesting results. And so here what we have on these graphs here is we've got um, the activity, and the partial pressures of hydrogen and CO um, across the reactor. So the x-axis is the length of the reactor. And so um, if, you, if you watch <coughs> here, so this is over about three and a half months of time. And so there was the deactivation here. So it starts out, it's not deactivated at all, and then the activity goes down. And then, so as you go through the reactor, it reacts, and you see the partial pressures decrease as it's reacting. And then here with the activity, it makes sense because the deactivation is, is dependent on hydrogen and CO. So if you have higher partial pressures at the beginning, it's going to deactivate faster at the beginning of your reactor than elsewhere. So that's why you see it's a lot more deactivated here at the start than it is at the end. Um, and so now we've got a model that we know that works, but we really got to optimize it because you want to have the reaction go as fast as possible. But you also don't want as much deactivation because that will limit your reaction in the future. And so we had to optimize those, and the problem is, is there all of these really are dependent on the same variables of temperature and the pressures. And so we really had to figure out what was the best things to, best way to run to have the most profit. So before we decided to optimize this model, we decided that we were going to optimize the rate of profit, so profit versus time. And we would do this by accounting for the value of the products, the value, the cost of the catalyst, and the cost of the reactants. And this would all be divided by the period of time that we would be running the reactor. Um, so out of all these parameters that we have, we chose to only adjust the partial pressures of hydrogen and CO for simplicity for this project. The results are shown here on these two graphs for the parameters. You'll notice on this graph here on the right that the partial pressure of CO remains relatively constant and low, uh, while the partial pressure of hydrogen slightly increases with time. Increasing the partial <coughs> pressure of hydrogen here kept the CO conversion constant around 38 to 39%. That's something we didn't expect, for the CO conversion to remain constant, because we're deactivating this catalyst. We should see that CO conversion go down, but optimizing the process, you know, 38 to 39% seemed the best. So then, um, to just compare the profit, the rate of profit, um, you'll notice that for our optimized model there in the blue, we reach the, the peak rate of money accumulation at about three and a half months running this cobalt catalyst which is pretty reasonable. Um, they do some other things that usually they're running it for six, to, uh, six months to a year. If you don't optimize the partial pressure of hydrogen CO, you'll notice at about two weeks, you reach your optimum rate of money accumulation. So mm -hmm. that is about three times as much money a year or $11 million a year according to our model. So significant shows optimizing is important. And we'd also just like to, to take a second to acknowledge the people who have helped us with this project, uh, specifically the Catalysis Lab, 
Uh, that's where we've got all of the models. Steven, he developed uh, the, the activation model that we were able to use, and Caviar developed the uh, RAID model that we used. And also we'd like to thank Dr. Henry for helping us uh, with some of the coding on um, 